Welcome to the Madison Wine Exchange and one of our greatest series ever, 09 Burgundy. This is something we are extremely excited about. So today with me I have my wine expert, Tim, and what we're going to be doing is going through all of these wines from the famous house in Burgundy, Joseph Druitt. So, Tim, the first wine we have here is which one? Uh, this is the St. Veron from Drew. I'll pour a little for you. Thank you. So now, 09, everyone's always talking about now this new vintage of a lifetime. Vintage of a lifetime, it seems to happen more often than, uh, more often than not. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm only alive once, so as far as I know at least, so only one vintage of a lifetime can truly happen. And everyone was hailing 05 as this magical vintage. But yes. now we're seeing 09s and everyone's throwing the press around and you know, of course prices are skyrocketing and all this stuff. So we want to demyth this today or solidify it, figure yeah, out what's absolutely. going on. So, uh, Druin, of course, being one of the greatest houses in Burgundy for negotiant business and some, some domain business. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let, let's see. All right. Let's see what it's all about. So now there's saint Varenne, further south in Burgundy. This is always going to be a brighter style. Definitely that light, bright, clean style, 100% uh, stainless steel. Um, now one thing that we know, I uh, want to let you know about the 2009 vintage overall, uh, everything seemed to happen couple of weeks earlier. Uh, it was very hot, the budding happened earlier, um, the harvesting a couple weeks early. Um, so keeping that in mind, let's... Uh, and, and using the 05 vintage as a benchmark, yeah. when you're looking at picking early in 09, that's earlier than it happened in 05, where the fruit had a little bit longer on the vines to set, mm -hmm. to get a little more sugar, to get a little more complexity. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing you always want to keep in the back of your mind. So let's see what the San Veran's all about. Again, that nose is very crisp, very clean. Right off the bat, lime blossom. Yeah. Minerally, green apple fruit. That lime blossom note just kind of lingers on. Definitely Honestly, pretty good acidity to oh. it uh, in the finish as well. I, I truly wish right now I had uh, you know some crab. I'd love some crab legs. <laughs> this, is, this is what it's calling for. But so far, based off of just this wine, again, southern France, southern Burgundy. Um, so far, 09's got my vote, but we'll, let's see. Let's see. Let's go in. Now, this one is a domain product from Druin. This is their Chablis Grand Cru Vaudecier. Now, this is one of the Grand Cru's up in Chablis, but Everyone knows Chablis as this area that is non-oaked. This one sees a little bit of oak. A little a bit, um, a little bit, and the percentage of new oak is very small. Um, Droon wines overall are not uh, seeing much new oak. Now, for for those that don't know, Chablis is this great area that many moons ago was an ocean. And when tectonic plates shifted and whatever happened millions of years ago before we were even specs, this ocean dried up, and all these oysters, these prehistoric oysters, were fossilized into the soil there. This soil is now, to date, known as a Kimmeridian soil, which gives it a real intense minerality and almost a stoniness quality, which also makes this wine great with shellfish. That briny quality that's in shellfish is also in the soil. So it's a classic pairing. Vaux de Sierra, I mean, you get some good oysters, you're going to town. So, let's see, Grand Cru, we're always going to be a crazy little animal. Let's yeah. see what 09's all about. A little more uh, restrained on the nose, a lot, a lot of uh, earthiness though. Yeah, you get those tangerine notes in there, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting some more, some subtle aspects of tropical fruit that seem yeah. to want to shine through on this wine. But the, the oak does rear its little head in here subtly, I mean, you get a little bit of that. Just a touch. This is another one of those wines I wish I could see tomorrow. I bet it's gonna be great. Yeah. I'm sorry, I had to swallow. It just, <laughs> there's few wines where they come across where you try it, you know it's great. It's well balanced. Barely even notice the alcohol level, which is Classic Burgundian, very mm -hmm. old world mm -hmm. style, but you feel that minerality lingering on. Oh yeah. I mean that's 
that's a beautiful line, without a doubt. So, so far, I'm of the, the court, 09, or two for two? Two for two. All right, so, what do we have next on the, on the agenda here? Uh, next up here is their Merceau. All right. Now, Merceau is that, that area where whenever people are talking in California, or in New World places, I should say, when they're going for the Burgundian style, this is what they're trying to go after. This is the most New World of Burgundies. This has got that rich butteriness. Yeah, it's got that uh, little bit of creaminess, a mm -hmm. uh, little bit of malolactic fermentation mm -hmm. in there. It's, uh, that's what brings that out. Uh, definitely more approachable to uh, New World style palettes, uh, so to say. This is, I mean, Merceau is always a lot of fun. And, you know, if you get a nice big salmon and a nice glass of Merceau, call me. I'll be there. It's a great <laughs> evening. But let's see what the 09 is. It's almost a little bit softer than your typical Merceau. It doesn't have that fleshiness. It doesn't have that, that in-your-face intensity of cream it's definitely there yeah it's definitely um... while the um, buttery and creaminess might have been hidden on the nose uh, right up front on the palate um, not overpowering but um a good start it's honestly given the first two wines that we tried i expected something to wow me mm -hmm. something to take me out to dinner and show me a good time but <laughs> it didn't truly happen here it's a great one it's well balanced it's well made but given the hype behind the vintage and what the first two wines have showed this drinks like a true negociant wine this is purchased fruit although well crafted not well tended to. So, in for my vote, I would say we, we've got two yeses and one no so far. You may think of a different animal. No, this is why I'm, we have. I'm right there with you. I think these two very classic style, uh, showing the vintage very well. Uh, the third one, little, um, not that it's bad by any means, but uh, no, but when didn't I'm wow me as best. That they yeah. And when I'm spending money for Burgundy, there's no such thing as a. A good cheap bottle of Burgundy. Value and Burgundy don't really go together. Yeah, not very. Uh, not very often. Yeah, not but, used in the same sentence quite <laughs> often. But here, if I'm spending money for a Merceau, that wouldn't be the one. So, I say we just jump right into the Chassagne. Chassagne Montrachet, a different style. Uh, it, it's Yang partner being Pouligny Montrachet. Both towns sharing the famous vineyard of Montrachet. Uh, Chassagnes tend to be nice and soft. They have a little more fleshiness to them than, say, Poulinis, but they're nowhere near Merceau qualities. They're kind of a halfway point in between. And uh, this nose has almost got a, a smokiness to it. Yeah, smoky. Uh, definitely get some minerality in there. It's even the, I mean, call me crazy, we have been drinking a little bit today, but a hint of ginger in here. And, of course, some grapefruit. Oh nine again. Since the Merceau is taking me down a step, I'm curious to see what this guy's got. Wow. Okay. My opinion of 09 is changing. Yeah. I tried withholding my expressions while you were tasting there, but uh, definitely a very well-balanced wine. Yeah, this has got much more complexity. I, I feel the acidity is extremely well integrated here. You know, your fruit is there, but it's not over the top. This is very youthful. I mean, this wine is it's an 09. It was just released. These are barrel samples we're talking about here. Yeah. Definitely something else that I'm uh, you know, blown away by is that uh, 2009 is drinking very well right now. Very approachable. Oh yeah, without a doubt. But age-worthy as well. I mean, we're talking 10, 15 years more left oh. in these wines. This is something right now, I mean, I am picturing like a butterfly chicken grilled with some greens underneath and just a light, light vinaigrette. Yeah, definitely the acidity would mm. pair well uh, with these wines. So, okay. 
what we're talking about here. Three S's, try and skip it. The last one, this is a famed wine. This is one that, if you ever see it, no matter what vintage, try your hardest to grab it, because it's un freaking believable. This is Druin's Bone Clos de Mouche Premier Cru. The Mouche is a vineyard. What was the, uh, what's your fun little story behind them? The bees? Oh, the bees uh, in the vineyard, they uh, actually almost looks like uh, flies. That's what Mouche translates to, but... Uh, You've got to love arcane translations. Moosh yeah. used to mean what we would call nowadays call bees, but then was translated solely to flies. Mm -hmm. So here we're talking the vineyard of the flies. Yeah. And if this wine is as good as everyone says it is, it could be the lord of the flies. But <laughs> Well, now this is a premier cru uh, vineyard, definitely treated like a grand cru. Oh, I mean, without a attention doubt. to detail. Mm. Well crafted. They also do a red, which is equally as difficult to find. Um, it's a lot tougher though, because reds in rough years in Burgundy, although I love off vintages, some of them are, are pretty intense. One of my classic stories was the 03 vintage with a red. 03 was ridiculously hot. It was top heavy. It was alcoholic. You know, for a $95 bottle, eh, I wasn't impressed. The white on the other hand was phenomenal. So, take what you will from that, and let's talk about the 09 white here. This nose is honeyed, hence the bees. It's got great fruit. Again, more of those tropical fruit notes seem to be more apparent here. I mean, yeah, I get almost a, uh, like a pineapple. Mm. Or... Mm. There's a little bit of that, that lychee in there, subtly, mm -hmm. just coming up. Wow, it's way too young. Without a doubt, way too young. I mean, the minerality is huge, the fruit is there, mm -hmm. acidity is in your face, all well balanced, all well integrated. But wow, it just needs time. I mean, whew. Yeah, it's got a lot going on in there, but it's definitely very concentrated. Where you can see that over time, as years pass, it'll evolve into something. All right. Pretty good. So, that, that second sip had to go down. But here we are talking 09. I think it's a great vintage based off of what we've seen here. However, you've got to pick and choose your battles. It's not the vintage of a lifetime based off of this. Based off these five wines, I think Druin has done a great job. Mm -hmm. I think the Merceau is a little the forgotten child you know maybe he's having a bad day who knows but i think these four are great i think this is a vintage of the decade yeah definitely the best that i've tasted through since the 05s yes if we're starting from 09 on so far this is my favorite vintage <laughs> yeah absolutely. i wouldn't hold it to this the caliber of 05 but i think it's great you do have to pick and choose though. There are wines out there that aren't great that will have this vintage on there. So you wanna make sure you're asking, you're trying, mm -hmm. try as much as possible, but we're gonna keep going through some of these. In our next set, we're gonna be talking about some red wine from the 09 vintage, actually from Druin, surprisingly enough. And we're gonna be talking about their wine in Oregon and seeing how the two match up to each other. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Please do make sure you come around, try these wines. Yeah. Come by, see what we have in our Cruvenet and uh, ask for Tim or myself. We'll be here all the time, guys. See you soon.